Hello guys, before this tutorial starts, um, I'm sorry I'm a little bit sick and my voice is not perfect, but I hope you will anyway enjoy the tutorial. So let's get started. Hello guys, here's Tim and on this little workshop we will go over lighting and image based lighting. So I did a quick question here on yeah on my YouTube channel and I asked a tutorial about lighting and image based lighting and 100% are yes by 17 people and that's pretty cool. So I downloaded the scrap scan here from 3D scans. So just you can see, this is 3dscans.com, sorry, <laughs> and here are several cool scans, so our portraiture scans and animal scans, uh, dragon scans, pretty cool stuff, and I worked with, uh, I did choose the scrap here. You can choose whatever you want. So let's get started. I just uh, reduced the crap here a little bit. And uh, let's try something for now. Remove unused points. Okay, that's good. Let's just get this here. So this is the crab, it's a little bit uh, poly reduced and I did some I images here today with a flash and softbox and so on. Just some examples here, soft light and this is a little bit harder light. And the cool thing is with photocrat photography or c cinematography you learn many things about light and how it works and that's a cool thing and let's get started and we will give a simple lighting setup here so let's call this crab crab let's make it black and round so at first let's create a camera And I think a good first step is to choose a focal length you like. So let's first, let's just place the camera for now. So let's zero it out. Zero, zero, zero. And let's split the windows in half here with uh, control two. Let's get here into the camera and let's get here into the normal perspective viewport. So let's move the camera a little bit around. Something like that. Let's go back here with the focus point and let's just get a focus point here onto the face and let's move the crab a little bit into the center something like that should be fine and this is our camera setup so with the normal focal length it's uh, 50 uh, millimeters and you can of course change this so for now I'd like to use a uh, a higher focal length, so a little bit more compression in the image. So I go with 90 millimeters because this is one of my favorite focal lengths. And let's get the camera a little bit back here. Let's move it a little bit up. And you can choose whatever you want, that's totally up to you. 
and let's get Redshift here. Let's get a shop network for the materials and a rod network. Let's place both down. Let's call this one Redshift. And let's call this one out. Let's dive in this one. Let's place down a Redshift custom. And just for now, let's get the samples here a little bit higher. And let's enable global illumination. Free bounces, that's all right for the beginning. And let's get inside of here. Let's create a Redshift network. And call this maybe mat for material. And call it just one. So material one. And let's get a simple R as material. And let's make it pretty rough, so 0 0.85. And let's set this to white. So let's assign a material here. The material is assigned, and now we can hit render. So Let's get some lights in here. So let's switch to the cam zero. And let's get some materials. Uh, oh, some lights, sorry. So let's just drop our RS light here. And you can already see a little bit the preview. So when you move it up or down. And let's start the rendering. So, first of all, let's try to get a light from the left side or from the right side. So, let's get the light. Let's view it from the top for now. And let's get it from here. And we will deal with a soft light, so make it pretty big. Something like that. And make it really... Uh, really uh, weak in its uh, intensity so let's get it to one and already you can see we've got a pretty soft light here so I move that to the side for quick and just play a little bit with the camera something like that Or let's get one from the top. I think that's pretty good. Or something like that. Let's get this to 1920 to 1080. And we will get something like this. So we will get a soft light. And then it will transfer to the blacks. So here we will get the shadows. And now we can already play only with this one light. So let's go into the light here. Look through. And let's get a redshift view here. And now when you move the light you can already see the impact. So this is more from front right and this is from back left. Or you can also make a rim light, so something like that. And now you can already see how the light impacts the geometry. And for now just don't deal with shading so creating complex materials so only focus at the beginning in my opinion on the lighting so let's just get this here a little bit closer something like that and we will get this soft light you can make it harder here the spread 
let's make it zero and now it's fully hard and you can already see the hard shadows and you don't get this really blending effect between light and dark it's just one line here and you will get this really harsh transfer but when you make it soft you will get the soft transfer from light to dark so let's try here a little bit out maybe you want it hard maybe you want it soft so I stick with the soft light for now and let's go to the top view so spacebar 2 to get into the normal camera mode here and then you can click 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 is the UV window so you can change the viewports the perspectives with 1 and 4 so let's go to the top so press 2 and let's get this light here and now let's duplicate it let's rotate it and let's move it to the left side Whoops. so now we get an equally good uh, lighted image here this is like a like a clay rendering so you don't get really hard shadows it's all pretty soft and I kinda like this look but I like to get this light here yeah from the left side now to fill the shadows so these shadows are now fully filled out but let's get uh, intensity maybe only to 0 0.25 and now you can see the shadows are a little bit there and that's a cool thing so you can play with this light here to fill the shadows up so maybe 0 0.1 to get the shadows a little bit not so dark so let's just stick with the 0 0.1 for now let's get us two lights and another big topic is the temperature of an image so you get warm and cold light so basically this will be really really warm light and this will be really really cold light but this is measured in Kelvin so this is the light temperature to the left it's warmer to the right it's cooler so this is our right light so let's call this light right and let's call this for now main and this is the light left um, fill so now you can already see it's a little bit bluer so the image gets cooler and you can play here with the slider so let's get a really cool light here 15,000 Kelvin that's pretty cool but you can already or also go to maybe 3500 and make it really warm and the cool thing is now you can play so let's get here 7500 and here let's go also to temperature and let's get this to a cooler light so maybe 2500 and now you can already see the impact to the image here so you get this cool side and this really warm side so something like that with uh, the equal intensity so let's drop this down to 0 0.25 and let's make it 5000 for now so that's the cool thing about it you can play with the temperatures and the position so now to uh, other little topic I really like to use let's disable the left fill the problem is in uh, real in the real world you will get many imperfections even on soft boxes the texture on it and so on and I really like to use an image 
for lighting. So let's just get here another camera and let's just place it here so we can see our softbox or our light emitter here. Let's select the right light and I was in Antwerpen on the Aspen Night Festival and here are just some pretty cool images of bokeh. So let's just use this. So let's quickly open this. In uh, Affinity or you can use Photoshop or something else. And just for now I will a little bit with the parameters. So let's get it a little bit brighter, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation. Let's get a little bit detail in here and the clarity to get a little bit more detail. And let's just for now save this out as a normal JPEG. And the cool thing is we can use this image to drive uh, the light here. So let's just save this out at full size or you can for sure decrease it. So let's go 2500 by 1669 and let's go with uh, pretty good quality. Let's export this to the desktop, save it and let's get our render view here. Let's get to camera 2 and now you can see our light here. It's cool because it's on temperature. Let's switch to color go to texture and go here under the texture tab and choose our image here. And now you can see the good the proportion is not right but let's just fix this uh, quick here. Uh, five by three, something like that. It don't need to be perfect but now you can see uh, we use the image here, Oops, not this one, we use this image to light our scene and let's just for now hop in to our main camera. Let's refresh the window and you can already see we will get a pretty cool lighting setup. Let's get this other light going here. Let's go to color and let's change it to a little bit cool light, so something like that. And let's boost this a little bit up. And let's make it a little bit bigger so scale doesn't matter doesn't really matter. Maybe five by five. And you can already see we will get this uh, we will get this purple look here. So let's just for now hit into the render settings and go to the samples. Let's just increase them a little bit. To get here a better quality. And now you can see already it's this purple light. And the cool thing is, let's go to our other camera quick, let's enable IPR rendering. The cool thing is you can play here with a tint, adjust, color multiplier. And now you can already play here with something like that. So you can get this to a cooler color, a, a warmer color, and you will get something like this. And I really like to use this because you will get really quick, really cool lighting setups. So let's go with 
another image here. Let's get let's get some clouds in here. So this is just a JPEG. So let's just open this and save it out quick. 2500. Let's save this one. And let's use this as our texture. So let's go to the clouds, show images. And let's use the cloud for the image and we will get something like this. And the cool thing is you can get a really cool example is let's just get this back here and let's spread this a little bit not so much and let's get it down and the cool thing is now you can see uh, the texture on our object so it's just like a light projection so let's get this to 2x2 two two. go to the render settings and let's just make here a quick foggy scene contribution scale 1 let's change the camera here and now with the fog you can see you will get already a pretty cool effect here so let's go this a little bit higher something like that and it's pretty good so let's get a clouds in here back quick and you will get something like this what I also really like to do just some basic bokeh uh, images or so something like this so let's just use this quick let's get this into affinity quick this already looks a pretty pretty decent lighting setup let's get another material here gold grab let's just get a really rough and dark material something like that pretty cool too so let's get this light in here quickly and you already can see a pretty good lighting setup here it's pretty quick and dirty but with some time you can really get something cool out of this so let's save this for now save it uh, let's get this image oh that's pretty cool too let's get to the camera and we don't have any uh, depth of field for now so let's enable this let's get the focus distance here and let's copy it in here so place relative reference and we will get something like that cool <laughs> so let's get the focus here 
into place and let's get a macro lens here so 90 millimeters that's okay for now oh this was cam free let's get something like that here let's go here into cam free so And that's a pretty hard depth of field, so let's take this down a little bit to 0 0.1. And now you can see it's it's pretty cool. So I want you um, not just to take few images and then make a quick lighting setup I want to try really try it out so play with different lighting setups so for example a three point lighting maybe a three point lighting might be a main light so something like that here this is our main light here comes a fill light and a backlight something like that Play with the parameters, guys. Play with uh, images. Make it with your smartphone or, or with a camera or just download random images from the internet. Play with filters in Photoshop or with cops in Houdini. And really try it out because I think image-based lighting is really cool and it makes a lot of fun so try it out and a course is now in the production organic design in Houdini this will come when it's ready and I hope you enjoyed this little very little workshop on lighting and I will see you in the next tutorial